Shad Marani Shuam Shiha Karazuthad Yohanan Shuhadam Shiha Maras Amin Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will see me no more. Again, a little while and you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I go to the Father. They said, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves, what I meant by saying? A little while, and you will not see me, and again, a little while, and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is in labor, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she is delivered of the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a child is born into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask anything of the Father, he will give it to you in my name. Henceforth you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive." that your joy may be full. I have said this to you in figures. The hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures, but tell you plainly of the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from the Father. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly, not in any figure. Now we know that you know all things and need none to question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? The hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, every man to his home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said this to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trials, but be courageous. I have overcome the world. Ushuha. La la aminai shoha yamshi hamaran Good morning family Good morning father It's not morning anymore so I don't know what to say Good afternoon family God bless you Let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen In our first reading, we heard Simon try to purchase the grace of God, the grace to impart the Holy Spirit upon those that he sees. And Peter rebukes him and says, Simon, the grace of God is not to be purchased. It is a free gift. Never think you are, you can purchase what God gives freely. And so our mission, family, is like Simon to repent whenever we have wronged God and to simply ask for the grace to receive. And so can we ask right now, repeat after me, God, I want to receive your free gift. What do you want to tell me today? Amen. All right, God wants to speak to you. He's a good father who loves you. And so you come in the name of Jesus and let us receive what he wants to say. 
I'm going to preach on what I feel the Lord's been saying to me, and I'm going to distribute that to you. Jesus says in John 16, today's gospel at the end, in the world you will have trials, but take courage, I have conquered the world. Many of you likely have heard that in Australia, Marmari was attacked while preaching God's word. A 15-year-old Muslim kid, we pray for him, attacked Marmari while he's preaching God's word. Why are we surprised? He's not the first and he won't be the last to be, tr be, to be tr like the evil one trying to shut up those who communicate what is true. Family, this is Christianity. Those who speak truth will be persecuted by the world. Jesus says, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. If the world persecutes me, they will persecute you. In Matthew 5, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, Blessed are you when they insult you, when they persecute you, when they utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Persecution is our blood. It's our history. And throughout all of the Old Testament, the prophets communicate truth persecuted. You know why? Because people can't handle the truth. They don't like the truth. They want their truth and not the truth. Persecution is in our history. I want you to repeat after me. Declare the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. We know this very well as Chaldeans. Someone near and dear to my heart, Father Raghid Ganni. I want to share his story. He was a beautiful priest, wonderful, amazing priest. Father Raghid, you've probably heard his story. He studied in Rome, and those who knew him knew that something was special about Father Raghid. And in 2007, he knew that it was crazy over there. He was in Mosul. He was full of life. He was bringing people to Jesus. And these Muslim extremists, they wanted him to close the church because the devil always wants to close churches. Many people told Father Raghid, Abuna, leave. They're going to kill you. And Father Raghid's statement was, if one person shows up to the church, I will not close the church. On June 3rd, 2007, Muslim extremists meet Father Raghid and his three deacons, and they say, we told you to close the church. Why are you still here? He said, how can I close the house of God? And they killed him in front of the church. I want us to declare each person. Please repeat after me. Basman Daoud. Wahid Isho. Ghassan Bidawid. Father Raghib Ganni. Written in the book of life. Living now in heaven. A greater life than we have here. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Jesus says, in this life, there will be trials. But be courageous. I have overcome the world. Do not be surprised. Marmari was attacked. Why are you surprised? Pers Christians are persecuted throughout the world. Why are we still surprised? You come here to be, fret, to be fed by the, the Lamb of God, to remember that he died on that cross so that we also can go into this world and preach the gospel. Jesus says today in the gospel, you are now in anguish, but I will see you again. Your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy away from you. Do you possess something inside of you that no one can take away? The type of joy rooted in an unfailing love from God. A joy that no one can steal because you know your Father loves you. 
not an exterior joy, not an exterior peace that comes from situations. Life is good, I'm happy, life is bad, I'm depressed. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. A joy that comes from Jesus. This joy is the joy of a martyr. Do you possess that joy? Last week, we read Acts chapter 5. It was about how the Jewish leaders didn't know what to do with these new, new people. They called themselves Christians. They followed the way. And they were thinking, should we persecute them? Should we get them out of here? And Gamaliel said, no, let's not do that. Let it just go away quietly. This is what the apostles experienced. This is Acts chapter 5. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, recognized. They took whips and they flogged them. They persecuted them. They wanted to hurt them and they did. These apostles were hurt. Ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and they dismissed them. What did the apostles do? They were just flogged. So they left, the apostles left the presence of the Sanhedrin rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of Jesus. Wow. When someone makes fun of you because of Jesus, do you rejoice? When you're persecuted because of Jesus, do you rejoice that you are worthy to suffer? I said earlier, one of the qualities of the devil is to shut the truth up. He wants to shut you up. This 15-year-old kid, again, we pray for his conversion, he wanted Marmari to shut up. He wanted him to spot, stop speaking the truth that Islam is not the truth and that Jesus is the only truth. Those who murdered Father Raghid wanted him to close the church, to shut up, to stop speaking the name of Jesus. And so they kill him. The devil wants to shut you up. In America, we have freedom of speech. Amen. But because we have it, many of us take it for granted. We don't live it. The devil is shutting you up by saying that your freedom of speech to say that Jesus is Lord and everything that goes with the Lord in terms of the moral law and what is true, that's hate speech. And so because we're afraid of being called haters, homophobic, transphobic, phobic, we shut up. The devil will shame you and say, your speech is hate speech. In today's culture, if we were to say that religions that are not of Jesus are wrong, they'll say we're Islamophobic, we're racist, we're intolerant. Jesus is the only way. As Christians, we are lovers. We love the person. We love you. I love you. Love speaks truth, and the truth is Jesus. Two weeks ago, I taught, and a lot of you didn't like it. Two weeks ago, I taught that IVF is wrong, morally wrong. It's sinful. I said that not to burden you, but because I love you. And when you love someone, you speak the truth to them. Sometimes it's not just what you say, but how you say it. So I apologize if I ever say something that is of truth, but not said in a very loving way. You have to be compassionate. You have to be merciful. But don't deny the truth. It is not loving to call someone a pronoun that is not their true gender. It's not loving to lie to someone. I love you, and so I will always try to speak the truth. The second way that the devil tries to shut you up is, again, we're in America, and we're in a democratic process. The devil's trying to tell all of us, hey, guys, your vote doesn't matter. Don't vote. It's pointless. It's all rigged anyways. Do you believe that? We live in America. You know how much I love these kids, right? Hi, kids. Kids, you still with me? Can you say hi to me? Say hi, Father John. 
What a beautiful sound. Louder, I can't hear you. Wake up, kids. Come on. One more time. Hi, Father John. You know how much I love these kids. I know you love them too. You got to vote. The only way that we're going to have substantial change in our schools, our public schools. Why are Chaldeans leaving public schools? We're all scared. The devil's trying to make you afraid. So the only way to change Cal these public schools is to vote and elect school board members that are in line with our values. You need a voice, and your elected public officials are your voice. But if you don't vote, you're not going to have those public officials. So don't complain. Father, St. George needs a school. You know what a school is? Do you know that Jeanette Middle School is basically St. George? Do you know that these public schools are basically St. George, Stevenson, Sterling? They're St. George. They're St. Joseph. We live there. We own those schools. We pay for those schools with our tax dollars. So why shouldn't we keep those public officials accountable and say, we have freedom? But if you don't vote and you believe the lie, you allow the devil to shut you up and say your vote doesn't matter, you let the devil win. We have two Chaldeans that share our Catholic Christian values that are running for Rochester Public School Board. Check it out. Engage yourself. But the devil says, let that about him. Well, it's, come on, man. Jesus says, in this world, there will be trials. But take courage. I have conquered the world. Jesus is saying, we need courageous people. And so I'm calling you to be courageous. There are too many of us that seek comfort. We don't want to ruffle feathers. We just want to say what people agree with or we shut our mouth because the devil shuts you up. Pope Benedict said, the world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. You were made to be a saint. Jesus' advice today, be courageous. I'm not asking you to seek out persecution, but I would challenge you. Are you courageous for Jesus? Do you think Mar Mari is going to shut up? I have no doubt he's not. Do you think we should shut up? No. Be courageous. And it will get harder. That's okay. Rejoice and be glad. Your reward is great in heaven. Amen?